sacrifice my life for my son or daughter, I'd be glad to do that. So there are going to be rare cases, but you guys don't want, you guys always want to talk about these 1 in 10,000 cases to try and justify abortion. Hey, look, that works with all, that works with all your friends and family, at, uh, that, you know, that works with your family at Thanksgiving, and that works with all your friends over at the high school, but you using one of these 1 in 10,000 cases to justify abortion, that ain't going to work with me, because I know that over 99.5% of abortions come from men and women who choose the sexual gratification over human life. They think sexual gratification is worth killing someone for. They they, yeah, thank you. There are children here. Thank you. Thank you for choosing to let that one live. That's right. See, I'm glad there are children here. Because maybe the next generation will be smarter than this one. Maybe the next generation will be more holy than this one. I'm glad the children are here because uh, maybe we can maybe we can instruct the, ch the next generation to stop killing babies. This my generation failed. Your generation is wicked. Maybe the next generation will learn and stop killing the babies. Maybe the next generation will be like, what were they doing? We've got ultrasounds. You've got ultrasounds. You can see the heart beating. You can see the arms and the legs. You can see what the sex of the child is. So don't, we're not even living in the dark ages. You know, this isn't medieval times when you don't know that much about the pregnancy. You have very accurate and very intricate uh, ultrasound machines that can show you everything. Oh, yeah. I'm asking, answering questions all night long. Yes, what is your question? Can you do what? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, with me in it? Oh, okay, in there. Oh, it's not even a real one. <laughs> so be a mocker. Be a mocker. Yeah, yeah, that's what the Apostle Peter said. See, the Apostle Peter said, in the last days there would be mockers and scoffers, just like it was in the days of Noah. Just like it was in the days of Noah. You know, God, God sent the people, uh, Noah, to be a preacher of righteousness for 120 years. 120 years, Noah preached to those people. And God God looked down, he saw that even the intents of their heart, that everything going on in the people's minds, and everything in their thought, in their heart, was nothing but wickedness continually in the days of Noah. And he wiped them all out. Why God? hasn't wiped out America at this point, I have no idea. I think, I think if, if God's wrath doesn't come on this nation soon, then uh, maybe he'll owe an apology to Sodom and Gomorrah and the people in Noah's time. But in the last days, according to the Apostle Peter, it'll be just like it was in the days of Noah, and people just be partying. Uh, poor Noah, building an ark for decades in a dry field, and all the mockery and the scorning and the scoffing these wicked people had. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Does anybody? Here's a good Bible quiz. Good Bible quiz right now. Does anybody know at what? What was the exact moment at which the people outside of the ark, their fate, their fate was sealed. Their fate was sealed and ir irreparable. Anybody? Anybody know at what point? At what point were the people outside of the ark, their fate was absolutely sealed? Anyone know? You know? Wasn't it when the water started? No, no. Actually, it was seven days before a single drop of rain. I was going to say it. I, 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 I had my hand raised. I was going to say the, it. Okay. The Bible says that God's own hand, God's own hand closed the door of the ark seven days before a single drop of rain came. These people were partying up in Margaritaville outside of Noah's Ark for a whole week and didn't even know their fate was already sealed. Their fate was already sealed seven days before a single drop of rain came. That's why we implore you on Christ's behalf when we come out here making fools of ourselves and doing everything in our power with banners and microphones to compel you on Christ's behalf to repent because you don't know at what point your fate will already be sealed and it'll be too late. There may come a day where you're still partying it up and don't even know that God's already given you over to a reprobate mind. So those people were partying it up for a week outside of Noah's Ark. But then the rains came and the fountains of the great deep broke forth. And then they started believing in Noah. And you know, if you want it, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of all the coloring books for kids. 
for Noah's, Noah's Ark coloring books because they always show a cute little tiny ark and a giraffe that's sticking out and a, a giraffe sticking its head out the window and an elephant with a little bird up on its trunk and all real cute. But I think if they actually did a realistic coloring book of, of Noah's Ark, you know, you turn the page and there would be there would be a bunch of bloody claw marks outside of the ark of people saying, we believe you now, Noah, let us in. We trust you now, God, let us in. A coloring book. You need a lot of red crayons because there would be a bunch of bloody claw marks on the outside of Noah's ark if it was realistic. And then the next, you turn the next page and you're going to need a lot of, like, pale green color because there's just going to be a big sea of bloated floating corpses outside of Noah's Ark. That'd be a realistic coloring book. That would be a real, that would be a realistic coloring book of Noah's Ark. Actually, if they did a realistic depiction of the flood of Noah, you would never want your kids to actually get near that book until they were old enough to actually be able to handle that. Because it would just be bloody claw marks and bloated corpses and people saying, we trust you now, too late, too late, but we don't want that for you. So the other side of that banner has a game plan of salvation. You need to repent. You need to cry out to God for mercy. If, if you're pro-abortion, this very night before your head hits your pillow, you need to cry out to God and say, God, I, I, I beg of you, forgive me for, for thinking it was okay to slaughter innocent babies and cry out to God for mercy of any other thing that you've done and say, God, I've sinned against you and you alone and if I died this very day, you'd, you'd send me to hell and I'd have no one to blame but myself. But then say, Jesus, I also know that you died on that cross for me, that you shed every drop of your precious blood for me. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And say, Jesus, I didn't earn it and I didn't deserve it, but will you give me the salvation that comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ? He'll do it. He'll do it for you. And then you can, uh, you know, you need to uh, surrender to Jesus. Not just acknowledge that Jesus was a historical figure, but surrender to him. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The Bible says, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Don't just acknowledge that Jesus existed. Make him your king. Make him your Lord. Make him be obedient to him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's how you need to treat Jesus. And you need to, uh, you need to stop sinning. Jesus told the woman caught in adultery to go and sin no more. Not go and sin less. Not go and try harder. They were about to stone the woman with real physical stones. And Jesus said, go, neither do I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. He wasn't saying saying that to be funny or to be, uh, you know, some deep, deeper meaning. He said, go and sin no more. I think if there's anybody in history who went the rest of their life without sinning, it was probably that woman. You need to fear God. A lot of people don't like that one. Even people in the church don't like to fear God up on my banner. But that's what Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28. Jesus said, do not fear him who can kill your body and afterwards do no more. Jesus said, fear him who can kill your body and afterwards cast your soul into hell. Yes, I say, fear him. David, King David said that the fear of God the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, you haven't begun to be wise. And Solomon, Solomon, aside from Jesus, Solomon's known as the wisest man to ever walk the earth. And at the end of Ecclesiastes, when Solomon is trying to consider what's the meaning of life? What's the whole purpose of all this? And at the end of Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, uh, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So even Solomon knew to fear God. Just a second. And live holy. In Hebrews 12, 14, uh, it says that without holiness, no man shall see God. So there's your game plan of salvation. So if you'll do that tonight, you could change, you could change your eternal destiny. I have I actually have gospel texts. If anybody is interested in changing their eternal destiny and would like to uh, go from being a hellbound sinner to a heavenbound saint, uh, you can have that for free. You can have that for free. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Change. You can change your eternal destiny. There's enough good information on this gospel track to change your eternal destiny. Free. That's a good. That's a good offer. Anybody else? Anybody? 
All right, Ryan, right. one, one last question, then I'm going to turn it back over to St. Steve. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, Steve's going to talk? That's right. That's right. I've been, I've been, I apologize, Steve. I've been hogging it a bit too much. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I've been, I've been uh, hogging. I wonder if you could remind me of the Ten Commandments and your interpretation of them. <sighs> I don't know. We, I don't have time about, to go through all of that. How about, how about when we start with Thou Shalt Not Murder? That's a good one to start with. Well, then it takes us right back into a okay, okay, I, I think Thou Shalt Not Murder is a good thou one. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Uh, well, that's not actually a commandment. But although Jesus said that the greatest command, that the second greatest commandment is uh, to, to love your neighbor uh, as you or yourself, and the first, the greatest commandment is actually to love God. The second commandment is to love your neighbor. I'm loving my neighbor because I know 65, over 65 million of my neighbors have been murdered through abortion. I love them enough to say, to say, let's stop it. Let's put an end to it. This is what love is. I love you enough to, to want to teach you. I love you enough to want to convince you to not have an abortion so that you're not seen by God as a murderer. I think that's loving. I love my fellow man so much. I'm more than happy to take take any mockery or anything that you have uh, to point you to Jesus. I don't have any answers. I'm just trying to point you to Jesus. But you're not He's the right got answer the answers. Jesus. There's oh. no condemnation, though. Yeah. Yeah. There's, There's another no corner. Just show me how it's done. There's no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, people There's who are no born. condemnation. God don't okay. preach that. There is therefore no, now no condemnation for that. those who walk he not according to no, I'm not. You're the one who's sharing it. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. Romans. Let's go to Romans 8.1. Let's go to Romans 8.1. Let's go to Romans 8.1 and let me read it. No, you're the one sharing it. It is, it is a conditional statement. Romans 8.1 is a conditional statement. You're not living, a, you're living according to the flesh. So let's go to Romans 8.1, which is what you say. Romans 8.1. There, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That is a conditional promise. That is, yep, that's, a, yeah, that's, that's walking according to the if slaughtering babies is not walking in the flesh, then nothing is. You know it's there not. is therefore who who has no condemnation? It's a conditional statement. There is therefore not no, now no condemnation for who? For those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. No one who is slaughtering babies is in. No, they don't. They don't qualify to any of the three recommendations. They don't qualify to have no condemnation because they're. Not not in, they're not in Christ Jesus if they're for killing babies. They are walking according to the flesh, and they are not walking according to the spirit. Three conditions they had to meet. They failed, 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 failed. Killing babies. Are you okay with killing babies? Are you okay with killing babies? Yeah. You want to strengthen the hand of the sinner so that none does come.